Hi guys and welcome to another Unraid tutorial. This video is an introduction to VMs in Unraid. You will learn how to get up and running with VMs in Unraid and how to successfully set up your first VM. You will also learn what needs to be done in order to pass through hardware to your VM. Cracky. Ok, when we first install Unraid on the server, you'll find that it creates four shares. and These are app data, domains, ISOs and system. Now the two shares we're concerned about for VMs is the domain share and the ISO share. So, what's the domain share used for then? Well, when you create a virtual machine or a VM, it creates a virtual hard disk. And all of the virtual hard disks for each VM are saved inside of this share called Domains. So the other important share, the ISO share folder, that's used for storing all of the install media that you may have for installing the various VMs that you're going to install onto Unraid. So we'd put our images like this Windows 10 one here, or this one, this Ubuntu one here, into the share called ISOs. And what we need to do, we need to make this ISO share available on our network so we can put our images there. So just click onto ISOs and then if you go down to the bottom here you'll see export and click that onto yes. And if you want to you can add security to the share but I'm just going to leave it as it is. OK so now let's connect to that share and then move one of our images on the desktop into that folder. So on opening the share you can see it's empty. But what I like to do is to create a new folder for each type of install. So this folder is going to be for Linux, so we'll call this Linux. And then we'll create another folder for Windows, where we're going to put the Windows ISO into. OK, so we'll just leave that copying, and then we'll minimise the window and go on to the next step. So now we need to enable the VM Manager. And for that we go to Settings. And if you see in the far right hand corner, it says VM Manager. And I'm going to click on that, but I'm going to have an error. So what this error says is I need to have Intel VTX or AMD V capability. Now what this is, is it's an instruction set within the CPU that allows us to run virtual machines. And we can see more about this if we go up to the top right hand corner and click on the Info button. OK, so here we can see two things are disabled. The HVM is disabled and also the IOMMU is also disabled. Now, only one of these two is absolutely essential for VMs to run. And that is the HVM, or the Hardware Virtual Machine as it stands for, which is supported by CPU features from Intel, which is VTX, and from AMD, which is the AMD V capability. So when we have this enabled, it allows us to create virtual machines, but they do have a limitation in that you can't pass through physical hardware to that virtual machine. So we'd only be able to create like a Windows virtual machine, connecting with something like VNC, and passing through only USB devices that are plugged into the server. Now if we wanted to pass through other hardware devices such as a GPU for a gaming virtual machine then we'd need to have the other thing enabled which is the IOMMU and that stands for Input Output Memory Management Unit and this is supported by a combination of both CPU and motherboard features and for Intel this is called Intel VTD and AMD it's called AMD IOV. Now hopefully on your server you'll already see both of these enabled, but if you don't, if you see one of them disabled or both of them disabled, and you think that your CPU supports these features, then you're going to have to make some changes in the BIOS. So let's reboot into my BIOS and I'll try and show you what things you should look for and try and change. So this motherboard is an ASRock Z170M Extreme 4, and it supports Skylake CPUs. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the top right corner where it says Advanced Mode. And this brings us into a more traditional looking BIOS screen. So the settings we're looking for are normally in the Advanced section, so let's go there. And the first place to look is under the CPU configuration. 
So let's scroll down through these and find our first setting to change. OK, so here we see Intel Virtualization Technology. We need to make sure this is enabled. Right, so now let's see what's changed on the Unraid server. Well, we can see here that the HVM is now enabled, but unfortunately our IOMMU is still disabled. So that tells us that the Intel virtualization technology being enabled on this page of the BIOS has only enabled VTX. So now we need to try and enable the VTD and get our IOMMU working. Okay, so let's go back up to our advanced tab. But this time we'll go down to chipset configuration. And if you look here, if we go down to onto VTD, we need to enable that for our IOMMU to work. So looking across on the server, we can now see we've got HVM enabled and IOMMU. So now we're ready to be able to use our virtual machines in Unraid. If you have onboard graphics, it's a good idea to set the primary graphics adapter to be onboard. This will help you if you want to pass through an NVIDIA graphics card and you want it in the primary slot later on. By doing this you won't have to do any extra modifications, but if you don't do this or if you didn't have onboard graphics and you wanted to have the NVIDIA in the primary slot and pass it through, then you'd need to pass through the ROM file. So it's a good idea to not have to do this by setting your primary graphics adapter to be on board. OK, so now that's everything done, we need to just exit and save the settings and then boot back into Unraid. So once we're back into Unraid, we can click on VM Manager and now we can go across and click on to Enable VMs and click Yes. And whilst we're in the VM Manager settings, it's a good idea to download the Windows Vert I.O. drivers. So just click here and then choose which version you want. You may as well download the latest version. So select that and then click Download and it will download that for you. It will also put it into the folder where your ISOs go so everything will be in the correct place. And now just hit Apply and then click Done. So now we can click on to the VMs tab, which brings us into the Unraid VM Manager. And here you can see there's various templates for the different VMs that you can install. And you can see the various Windows templates here and the various Linux templates. And also you can see two prepackaged templates for Libra ELC and Open ELC, which basically runs Kodi in a VM, so it can be a good replacement for your HTPC. So let's have a quick look in one of these templates. We'll have a quick peek inside the Windows 10 one. Um, as you can see here, there's various settings that you can select. Here you can choose the number of virtual CPUs you want to have. This is where you select how much memory you want to assign to the VM. And clicking here on the install ISO, it links back to our ISO shares that we set up earlier. And here you can see the Windows folder and the Vert IO drivers that we just downloaded. So clicking onto the Windows folder shows the Windows 10 ISO that we copied across there earlier. So if we were to select that one, we could install the Windows 10 ISO into our VM. And underneath that, you'll see the primary disk location. This is where Unraid will create the virtual disk for your virtual machine. And as you can see here, it's in the share called Domains, which also we set up earlier, and it puts it in a folder named Windows 10. Now that folder is named Windows 10 because the name of the VM is called Windows 10. But if I was to change the name of the VM to say Windows 10 Gaming Machine, then the location folder for the primary disk would also change to match that name. And for the primary disk size, you specify here what size you want your primary virtual disk to be for the VM. So just put in whatever you like there. And here we choose which type of graphics card to use with the VM. We can use VNC if we don't have a discrete graphics card to pass through, or if we don't have our IOMMU groups enabled. But as you can see they're enabled here, this would allow us to pass through a discrete graphics card. But I recommend whether you choose to use VNC or a discrete graphics card, when setting up the VM, just set it up with VNC first, get everything working, and then you can swap to a discrete graphics card afterwards. 
Anyway, you just select the graphics card that you want from the drop down list. Here you can see there's a GTX 1070 that can be selected, so I'd select that. And you can do the same with the sound. You can select which sound you want to use. This here is my onboard motherboard sound, and here is the HDMI sound from the graphics card. And in this section here, you'll see a list of all the USB devices that are plugged into the server and you just check which ones you want to have passed through to the VM. This function doesn't actually require IOMMU to be enabled, so if you don't have that enabled on your server, you can still pass through USB devices. So USB devices are always really easy to assign, you just have to check which ones you want to use and they'll work in the VM. But sometimes you'll find that assigning other devices such as graphics cards can be a little bit more tricky. Even though this is selected here, and if we go to the info, we've got our IOMMU groups enabled, there's one other thing we need to check before trying to pass it through. So click onto Tools, and then System Devices, and if we scroll down, we'll see here the IOMMU groups. And the server will group your hardware into different groups. But in order to pass through some hardware, it has to be in its own individual group. It can't share a group with any other hardware. So let's find my graphics card and see which group it's in. This is my graphics card here, and it has a number of 01.00.0. And underneath that, there's also the sound part of the graphics card, which has the same number, but the last part is a dot one. So here we see the graphics card is in the IOMMU group one but unfortunately it's not there on its own. There's also another device present in the group. So this means that the graphics card will not successfully pass through to a VM. And you can see here, we actually have this device, which is a PCI bridge that's also located in group one. So this means that we're not going to be able to pass through the graphics card with our IOMMU groupings like this. But there is something we can do to try and split them up and make them different. If we click onto settings and then go back to our VM manager, we need to toggle the view to the advanced settings by clicking here. And then if we go down to this part here, you'll see enable PCI ACS override. So we need to click on the drop down box and set this setting for yes. And having clicked apply, you'll see the server says that it needs to be re rebooted for these changes to take effect. And for those of you who are interested in what the ACS override does, well it adds one line into your syslinux configuration file. It adds this line here, and that's why the server needs to be rebooted in order for this to take effect. So let's restart the server. Okay, it's all booted up again now. So that, now let's go back and check our IOMMU groups. So just click onto Tools, and then System Devices. And you should see this warning here about the ACS override being enabled. If you don't see this warning, then it means something's gone wrong and it hasn't been enabled on your system. So go back and check in the VM manager that is actually set to be enabled. Okay, so now let's look if the graphics card is actually in its own IOMMU group. Well, as you can see here, it has been given its own group and it's now in group 11 on its own. So that means now this card can actually be successfully passed through to a VM and used without any issues. Okay guys, so let's recap on what you should do when using VMs for the first time in Unraid. 1. Make sure your ISO share is available on the network and then copy the install media of the operating system you want to install to that location. 2. Check your server supports HVM and IOMMU and then ensure that this has been enabled. Three, if passing through hardware, check the hardware you want to pass through is in its own individual IOMMU group. And four, install the OS and have fun with the VM. So guys, that's the end of the video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, then please hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos from me in the future, then why not subscribe to the channel? Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you all in the next video.